Uh, so it's five o'clock now. So just to respect your time, we'll get started. Uh, first, first of all, I'm Esmond Wong. I'm a pharmacist and CDE and welcome to uh, this video. Uh, I'm here to show you today how to use my website, uh, which you should have all received an email uh, to sign up for. I'll also review the exam. Oh, here's Bianca. I'll also review uh, the CD exam, the competencies that will be covered in the exam. Uh, we'll do a re review of our study schedule together. And then I have a, uh, I'll talk about a bit of a survey for you guys to do. It's just kind of rating your confidence uh, before and after the course to see, oh, Ellery's here too, to see how, uh, how much uh, the course has improved your confidence in recommending med medications or recommending lifestyle changes or screening and kind of like your general uh, comfort in diabetes. Yeah. So if you do have any questions or concerns at any time, please feel free to unmute and ask me. I'm at your service. I'm try my be absolute best to help you be comfortable with the exam and pass the exam and just to increase your diabetes knowledge in general. Yeah. Okay. So here's my website. Uh, you, you, as you know, you should log in through here. So there's various parts of my website that I want you to be familiar with. Uh, the most important one, the most important parts are the quizzes, the pathophysiology lectures, the chapter study guide, and of course, the practice examinations. So um, if you, for the website uh, and for the exam, the most important document to read is the 2018 Diabetes Canada Guidelines. That's the most important document to be familiar for, with for the exam. And there is another book called Diabetes the Essentials. Uh, the paper copy of that is actually no longer available. They're trying to move it to a digital uh, digital space, but they're actually having problems converting it. So it's been delayed for a couple of weeks. Uh, that, that book is useful for just some general information, but it's not necessary for the exam. The most, uh, most important document is the 2018 gu guidelines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, the, there's various competencies on the exam, which you can find here. Uh, these are the competencies that will be covered by for, in the exam, and they're all labeled with different weights. So 1A has the most questions, uh, and then 2A has the second most, and then 1B, and then 2B. And you can see that there are competencies like pathophysiology, nutrition, medications, self-care management, all of that will be covered by the exam, and then you can see how important it is. So for example, uh, describing the benefits and appropriate scheduling of self-monitoring of blood glucose is a 1A competency, which means that there go, there's going to be a lot of questions on the exam. Whereas uh, things such as describes benefits of continuous glucose monitoring and flash glucose monitoring, that's only 2B. So there's not a lot of questions on, on the exam. No. Okay. So uh, next, so here we go. So for the competencies, uh, it's broken up into those co competencies here, which I discussed before. There's eight of them. And you can find kind of a little bit of a framework of how to study for each competency in my high, how to study uh, section. So here, uh, you know, for pathophysiology, you should review my lectures. For the nutrition, I've got some uh, resources here for insulin adjustment here, et cetera, et cetera. Unfortunately, there's no, no getting around it, but there's going to be a lot of memorizing for the exam. And so here is, uh, I've made some various cheat sheets. Uh, these are free to download. All you need to do to download them is press the pop-out button here. And then up here, you just print print or download or however, however you want to uh, print those. So those are great to uh, print out, start memorizing. Uh, with these insulin calculations, the exam has gotten away from that a little bit. And so there's less and less insulin calculations uh, on exam. But I think in real life, as a pharmacist, you are perfectly positioned to adjust uh, insulin and medications in your practice. And so this cheat sheet allows you to uh, 
see how to, un I put a how to understand it as well as how to do those insulin calculations. So I think in real life practice, uh, you'll be doing this a lot once you become CDEs. Yeah. Um, maybe I could get people to maybe unmute and we'll do a little bit of a round, a little bit of a round table. Uh, what, in what, in Alberta, I believe it, we are quite flexible with our prescribing. What's it like in other provinces? Maybe I can get some volunteers just to chat about that. Uh, in Quebec, we're starting to adjust medication in uh, blood pressure, lipids, and uh, diabetes, especially type 2. Most uh, community pharmacists don't feel that comfortable with type 1s, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a really good start, and actually we're paid to do that. So uh, okay, good. it's a very good incentive, and uh, that makes your practice way more uh, uh, enlightful uh, mm -hmm. for the pharmacist and the patient. So. Good. How about Ontario, the big the big province? What are you guys doing in Ontario? Do you guys get paid for clinical services? Anyone from Ontario in here? No? Okay. Anyone from any other province? Uh, you know, BC, in Alberta, we do get paid for clinical services. So BC, Saskatchewan, Maritime Provinces. Uh, I'm from Nunavut and we have oh, okay. zero scope of practice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, it's Pharmacy Act circa 1956. Oh, okay. Inter interesting. <laughs> well, I feel like none of it, like, you know, there's not a lot of access to specialists. So I think that you do, you could have a big role, role there if you can like specialize in diabetes. So, yeah, okay. yeah, we have really close working relationships with the docs. So, I mean, we do a lot of like insulin dose adjustments and things like that, or okay, escalating good. therapy and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, most of what people would be like, I've worked in Alberta before too. And a lot of the APA stuff I would be doing in Alberta, I just get solved with the facts or I call the doc and be like, hey, this is what we're doing. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Chris. And then Amanda says in Manitoba, you guys can prescribe insulin supplies and insulins. Wonderful. Okay, so let me just minimize this. Okay, so yeah. So uh, there's various cheat sheets here for nutrition and stuff like that. Statistics, there's a lot of. Uh, there's this medications cheat sheet here, which talks about a lot of the questions are like, okay, if this person has bladder cancer, which one is contraindicated? Or if this person has frequent UTIs, which one do you avoid? So this is a nice summary of that here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys can ignore the free quizzes section. You all have access to the full quizzes and the full quizzes are repeatable infinitely. So they're just there to drill you to uh, make sure that you remember uh, the screening targets and things like that. You can just do them over and over again until you hit 90% or so. Um, I have all, a bunch of videos here, which talk about pathophysiology, uh, nutrition, medications, and variety of topics there. The pathophysiology lectures are really important uh, because as you can look, see here, pathophysiology has a lot of 1A uh, competencies, which means there's going to be a lot of questions on, the, on there. So my pathophysiology lectures should cover everything you need to know for the exam. Uh, most importantly is the chapter study guide. Uh, so there are a lot of chapters in the diabetes guidelines. The first two you can kind of skip. It's uh, just introduction and stuff like that. There's some statistics there, but I've got it in my cheat sheet. So how it works is that each one uh, I've highlighted what's important, what I feel will be important and what's on the exam. Red will be memorized and yellow is important. Once you've read through it, uh, I've got some test questions at the bottom here. Uh, to test yourself on the on the, the content that you just read, as well up here, you know I've got a kind of a 
scale, like how important the chapter is, and approximately how much time you should read. It depends, this really depends on how fast of a reader you are. If you're a slow reader, if English is your single second language, you might have to double that. If you're a fast reader and you memorize things easily, you can like reduce it a half or so. Yeah. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, I, you, there is an exam form. As you can see, you can, and you can search previous people, students' uh, questions as well. But if you do have a question, I prefer that you do put it in the form so that everyone can learn instead of emailing me directly. And sometimes you get more from different viewpoints. Dietitians might uh, answer things slightly differently. Social workers might answer things slightly differently. So yeah, you just come here choose whichever approximately which uh, competency it is and just put it in there. Yeah, it allows you to kind of interact with all the other people writing the exam as well. And then for practice examinations, uh, you do have the package D. So you have three attempts at, uh, three attempts at uh, practice exam one and two, and then unlimited of the exam number three here. Yeah. So when doing these, I would suggest uh, kind of timing, like read through, the, read through the chapters first. But when you're attempting one of these, I would suggest you pretend like you're in a real exam, give yourself a time of three and a half hours and see how uh, far you can go through. Once you've completed it, uh, then check your time and then go back and review the answers. Yeah, I, I will have some Q&A sessions as well. So I have one uh, usually in May with Dr. Sue Peterson, who is an endocrinologist in Calgary. She wrote the help write the medications part of the guidelines. And uh, it's just a place where you can, usually it's a week or two before the exam. You can email me more complicated questions and then she can answer them. And then I have a Q&A uh, usually like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday before the exam to answer any last minute questions you have and try to get you as confident as possible for the exam. Yeah. And so that's a review of my uh, website. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? Just a quick question. Can you hear yeah. me? Oh yeah. Hi, Hi, Mir. How are you doing today? Good. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm um, good. Like regarding your first question in Ontario, we don't have much like prescribing rights. Oh, because, okay. Like we have like a medication review and we can uh, like adapt a prescription or authorize refill, mm -hmm. but we don't have much of the clinical setting. So oh. coming back to the preparation for CDE, just want to like, as you have mentioned, highlighted those stuff uh, on your um, website. Like, do we have to really memorize, understand, or like, because uh, I did I did write the exam in past, okay. but somehow the questions were very difficult. Like, even though, like I studied a couple of times the 2018 clinical guideline. Mm -hmm. So, so your question is like the question is like like do you do you think like with this guideline? Mm -hmm. like understanding and like, do we have to memorize all those uh, like clinical studies, outcomes and- Oh, okay, like, okay. Yeah. I see your question. Okay. So uh, the answer, so each chapter has different things to memorize. I know it's impossible to memorize the entire guidelines. I haven't, I haven't memorized them yeah. all either. Uh, that's why I have those cheat sheets there so that it kind of helps you zone in on what you want to memorize on. Um, the other thing is, if you look at this, I'll talk about, yeah, you don't need to memorize the table of all the studies and stuff like that. What you really need to memorize is, like, so you don't need to memorize, like, the study on Genuvia, the name of it, and how many patients were in it and what was the outcome. What you do need to memorize is kind of the class effects. So the TP. DPP-4s in general uh, did not show any improvement in cardiovascular outcomes, whereas some of the GLP ones did. All the SGLT2 inhibitors showed improvement in renal outcomes, and none of the none of the DPP-4 inhibitors uh, showed that. So you don't have mm -hmm. to memorize. So here, let me just blow this up. So you mm -hmm. don't have to memorize. Hmm. 
website slow today. So you don't have to memorize, uh, where is it? This table here, yeah. This table that has all the outlines like Car Carmelina and Saver Timmy and stuff like that, you don't have to memorize that for exam. You just have to know mm -hmm. the kind of class outcomes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one, one more question, like uh, the questions and then they give you four uh, like options yes. for the answer, multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are very similar. It's like application of the knowledge, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, like, and they are covering different, like we are as the pharmacist, which is good. Like we have more, but sometimes the question is coming from like, like nursing angle, you know, because there are nurses and dietitian, they're also writing the exams, other healthcare professional. Yeah. So sometimes the question, the way they put it is sometimes it's very difficult to find the right choice. Yes, that, that is true. So everyone writes, sorry, someone else talk. Uh, that everyone is writing the same exam. Like I've also had some physiotherapists and social workers and a family doc go through my course as well. So yeah, usually you can, you can get it down to, you usually you can eliminate two, but then the last two are a little bit harder to, uh, a little bit harder to figure out which one's the right answer. So that's why I have all those practice exams so that you can f figure out the right answer. Also in my exams, I tell you why each one is wrong and why each one is right. That way you can kind of look, look at it more analytically. Mm -hmm, okay. Like here, let me show you, like down mm -hmm. here, so here's one question and then I show incorrect and then I show you why it's incorrect and which and why each one is correct. So by practice, practicing that, I think you'll be able to kind of tease out the correct answer a bit better. Um, another thing is that you have to choose the best answer and sometimes there's okay answers mixed in mm -hmm. with, with the question, but you have to choose the best answer. And so I have a couple of those questions in my exams where I've put a bunch of technically okay answers, but there's one best answer out of them. Okay. No, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you do have like, say you come across some questions where it's like, oh, I don't know why, like I can narrow it down to two but I can't mm -hmm. figure out why this one's better than the other one. Just put it in the exam form. Just, uh, you know, don't, don't put the question, but say like, you know, ex tell the situation and I can't tell why mm -hmm. this question, for this question, you know, these two are very close. Why is this one slightly better than the other one? And, and any suggestion for time management? Because I think time, the questions are very long to read. Then mm -hmm. you have to use your knowledge to answer and by the time, like when you, towards the end of the exam, you have lots of questions left. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's just my experience. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to manage the time. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, yeah. I've got, a, I, have, I have a lot of uh, students who say that time is, time is the most valuable resource. So not there's enough. a couple, yeah, there's not enough. So there's a couple ways, I, um, there's a couple ways to manage it. One is that I've got a couple of questions where I have like really, really long answers and really, really long questions. And within the, when in the answer, I explain, okay, how you do it is you looking for certain things. Like if you see something that you know is wrong, you just cross it out. And then uh, like, because there's a lot of long list questions. And so if mm -hmm. you see something wrong, then you just cross out all the ones you see with the one wrong. Or if you see the one that's right, you can, you can circle it. That way you can uh, kind of cut down on so that you don't have to read every answer very closely because once you've crossed out that, okay, I know this one, so like there's A, B, C, and D. And within A, B, C, and D, there's one, two, three, four, five. But if you know five is wrong, then you can cross out all the answers with five and then kind of speed it up that way. Um, yeah. the, the other thing is just practice. The more you practice on the exams, uh, the faster you get at them. And so that's why you have a multiple tries at the exams. And mm -hmm. uh, that's why there's also a timer so that you can keep track of your time as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not like, easy. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. not an easy exam. So yeah. yeah, it's not an easy exam. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But that means when you pass, you can feel even more proud of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I, I like I like your cheat sheet. I'm gonna try and focus on the red and the yellow area. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And then, yeah, once you have the cheat sheets, then you can uh, just, you know, practice these ones, the quizzes faster and faster. And then, you know, it just, it's just practice. The, the more you do it, the faster you get. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, so for the exam itself... So the exam itself, uh, you do have a choice of writing on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I believe. Um, it used to be paper, but I believe it'll be online uh, this time. With, well, it has been online since COVID. And so that can be a little bit stressful for people who are not uh, very computer literate. Uh, so you need to, down, you need to uh, be, get familiar with the Top Hat uh, platform, which is a which is a platform where you log in and then you can write the exam. Uh, you want to kind of write it, you want to make sure that you, wherever you're writing it has good internet connection. Because if you uh, get disconnected, then you have to do that room scan all, all, all over again. So that room scan is when you're writing, before you can get into the exam, you have to like use your camera and scoop all around and show that there's no cheating. You don't have a person in the room with you. You don't have all the, you don't have like my cheat sheets like plastered all over the walls or the ceilings. If you get disconnected, you have to do that room scan all over again, which increases your anxiety and wastes time. So you wanna make sure you're doing it, uh, doing, the exam somewhere where you have a really good internet connection. You don't have to do it at home. A lot of my students prefer to actually do it at work because they know they go in on a Saturday, they know the place is closed, they just cover up any kind of books or anything like with a blanket or stuff like that. It's quiet, it's got a good internet connection. So that's uh, th- that's that's another option as well. Uh, you are, I believe you are allowed to bring in a calculator, which they didn't allow when you had uh, paper exams. And some of the disadvantages are that, uh, you know, on paper, you can like cross things out or write, a- write answers and stuff like that, but you can't do that on the online exam. They give you kind of this blank piece of uh, this text box where you can write stuff in. Uh, so there's pros and cons, but you want to get comfortable with that top hat uh, platform because that'll just reduce your anxiety when you when you're actually writing the exam. Yeah. So any, any questions about the exam itself? So you're confirming that we're not able to use or allowed to use any cheat sheets or anything because we need to scan the room before. <laughs> that's that's correct. Yeah, you can't have my stuff like posted on the wall or something like that when you do the wall scan. They will room scan. They mm-hmm. will uh, not allow that. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's see here. Um, reviewed the futures. We re- reviewed the exams. Okay. So our schedule. So we're going going to be all doing this together. And uh, so for February, uh, the goal is to kind of read chapters one through 10 of the guidelines and review the exam cheat sheets. Uh, We'll have another touch base meeting in March, probably the end of March to to see how things are doing. Uh, By then, I would like you to have read chapters 11 and 220, uh, read Pathophysiologies 1 and 3, and be able to get to 90% on the full quizzes. And yeah, and if you have any questions or concerns during that time, I'm here to I'm here to help you. Uh, I don't want you to feel alone uh, while you're doing doing studying for this. I want us to you know be a community all studying together. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to put it on the exam forum. Uh, or if you so if you found resources that help you, please post them. That way, it helps everyone else. And uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Any From your experience, how many hours per week on average someone should put into studying to uh, have a fairly good uh, chance of success? That's difficult to say because it depends on your level of diabetes experience. Um, if you have no diabetes experience at all, then I would probably say and maybe like two, three hours. Uh, 
if you are already very experienced with diabetes, maybe like one to two hours a week. That's just a rough, rough guideline. And that's actually what I'm uh, expecting. So that uh, makes sense. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Lines up with your expectations. Uh, yeah. I just want to know if some people, they start to read it also in French, because it seems like the guidelines in French, it's, it's like a PDF document. And it's very written, like, I mean, different from the guidelines in English, which is like, I mean, uh, which is like not only PDF document, but also seems to have like some videos and some images. So I don't know if anybody here has started to read it in French or not, the French side of the guidelines. That's a, that's okay, a good question. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, that's okay. But probably they, they they didn't actually. They probably just start the English one. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm... actually, I'll look into the French version. I didn't have the uh, idea of looking at it, and uh, if ever uh, I'll touch base with you if, if there's something. Thank you. Welcome. Also, I'm sorry, just like because I I didn't start to read any chapters yet because I did the uh, the I'm sorry the website that Mekison sent it to us. I, I almost finished it, the health e-learning. And I don't know if some people, they uh, they finish it and then they switch to the guidelines. I don't know if it's really different or like it's a little bit similar, uh, but it seems very easy with the other one. Uh, so that's uh, probably there are some people here, they started with the other one because we received the, the website uh, like before your, your the health e-learning, we received it before that. So be, uh, actually, before your website, uh, Isma. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you know some people that they already, yeah, started um, or almost finished her e learning website. Yeah, like I've, I've heard of some people ask about that. Um, you, the e pair learning health site is a good resource. Um, but if you're looking to pass the exam, I think uh, you you should concentrate on my website for now. Like my web website is designed to help people pass the CD ex CDE exam. Uh, Absolutely, you can, yes. Yeah. You can do the e-pair learning uh, at any other, at any other time. Uh, you could also, the essentials book that I was talking about, that's also a good resource. Uh, but, you know, if you're looking for, if you're kind of short on time and looking to pass the exam, then I think uh, going on my website would be the best idea. For now, for now, until after the exam. The, and you uh, the, said the first two chapters just to skip the first two chapters, if I'm not wrong, is that it? You could, like it's just an introduction in methods. So, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, the, thank you. Uh, uh, yes. I went through the uh, first block of the uh, Pearl Health uh, uh, website. And in comparison with the first 10 chapters I've read through uh, Espen website, I find Espen is way more precise and straight to the point. Uh, into uh, yeah, thank you. Go thank ahead. You I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you finish? I'm sick. sorry. It was Eric huh? who was talking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for that comment, Eric. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <coughs> last, lastly, uh, well, sorry, is there any, any other questions, concerns? Yeah. In the clinical guideline, mm -hmm. there are key messages. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so, do you think those are the summary of that particular chapter? Um, it is. It is a summary, but I don't think you'll pass if you just read the key messages. Uh, okay. as, yeah. Yeah, as I mentioned uh, on the study guide, anything in gray is important as well. So mm -hmm. the key messages here and the summary is also, uh, and the key recommendations here are also really important. I, I have one more question. For example, when we have we are answering a question, um, the the, the the there is one right answer out of four, mm -hmm. but there could be two school of thoughts. For example, two different doctor wants to approach two different way. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's where I find the difficulty. Like, uh, maybe I'm I'm applying the wrong approach. Um. Yes. Or there... CDE, CDE, like they have their own way of like uh, treating the patient 
like do you think there could be two different way of applying the knowledge or the guideline mm, there's always room for interpretation but on the exam usually i found that they've like nine 95% of the time they've made it the uh, question so that one answer is a lot more right than the other 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 questions um also oh something i forgot to mention as well there's on so you have 165 questions but only 140 of them are worth any marks there's also 25 so called pilot questions on the exam which are just uh questions that they're testing out for next year to see if enough people get the right answer so you get zero marks for those pilot questions and you don't know which ones they are and so mm -hmm. it could be that you know one of the questions that you're struggling with is one of those pilot questions and so even if you struggle and spend a lot of time on it it's still worth zero marks whether you get it right or whether you get it wrong so if you mm -hmm. are stuck on a question i would suggest that you skip it and just come back to it later to make the most of your time because if okay. it is a pilot question it's not worth any marks and mm -hmm. there those questions they may be testing like okay do it did they make the difference between right and wrong big enough and it could be so they're just testing it in re real life okay yeah because that's where i find real like we could wait waste a lot of time it's yeah uh Negan there's uh, 25 pilot questions and all of them are worth zero marks thank you yeah no problem no problem okay so that kind of brings us to the end of the meeting um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be sending you guys a survey monkey uh just on uh it's just three questions one is your general comfort in diabetes one is how confident you are in uh, changing medications or changing insulin prescribing medications and another one on changing uh on screening and recommending lifestyle changes it's just a, a, a just a scale of one to ten or something like that and then we're just going to test it afterwards to see how it's uh how it's improved so yeah just look out i'll be sending that uh email later this week sometime no oh, and amanda has a question can we have a white paper and pencil with us to write down i don't believe that you can i i believe you're not allowed any kind of paper any physical paper like there is a text box on the top hat format that you can use to write that stuff down but i don't believe you are allowed any papers and pencils with you for the exam you can verify with the CDECB, but I don't believe you can, Amanda. Perfect. Um, I'll also be including one more question on the survey, and it's kind of like, what do you want out of becoming a CDE? Is it because you want to be more involved in insulin adjustment or uh, to kind of be able to recommend exercise or, you know, what, what do you see doing with your CD and, you know, and how can I help in kind of promoting pharmacy practice and promoting your diabetes practice? So yeah, that'll be the last question of my survey. Okay, wonderful. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to put in it in an exam form. I'll be happy to answer it right away. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, if there's no I'll give a minute to see if there's any other more questions or concerns. And then, uh, yeah, I'll end the meeting. Um, Bianca or Ellery, do you want to mention anything? I think Ellery is gone, uh, but uh, on my side, thank you very much, Esmond. Uh, it was uh, perfect. You follow the agenda. Uh, thank you very much for presenting your website. And uh, do not hesitate to reach out to Esmond uh, if you have any question. Uh, it's really a, a good offer that we have to this city's court, so we are really happy. So I hope you are all um, super um, motivated about this uh, program. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very motivated to help you guys pass and everything as well. So yeah, uh, I'm, your, I'm your personal guide through this. So try to, have, try to learn lots and have fun and uh, hopefully... Uh, I'll see y'all in person sometimes at a diabetes con at a national diabetes conference or something like that. We'll have beers together. <laughs> As a quick question. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier about uh, getting comfortable with the new format, the electronic format of the exam versus paper format. Uh, do you have any suggestions as to how to do that? 
Um, so the CDCB will email you uh, some instructions on how to use Top Hat uh, probably a couple months before, probably like March, April, that time. So what you can do is you can actually log into Top Hat and get familiar with it. It'll, they'll give you just a whole bunch of dummy questions like who's the prime minister of, of uh, Canada and which way is Alberta compared to BC? Like it's just a whole bunch of dummy questions, but you can go in there and practice like popping up the calculator and popping up the textbook and oh, okay. scrolling and stuff like that. So that's how you just, everyone, no one's familiar with it. Um, apparently Top Hat is used for like high school students as well. So, but um, yeah, you just go in there, practice it until you get comfortable with it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's actually kind of similar to the format of my, somewhat similar to the format of my exams. So um, if you get familiar with my exams, you're kind of halfway there. Okay, that's great. Wonderful. Okay, well, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Hope to hear from you soon on the exam forum. And then I'll send out a date for the end of March uh, pretty in a, in a week or so. Thank you, Edmund. Thanks a lot. No problem. No problem. I hope to talk to you all soon and chat with you on the exam forum and everything. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. All, thank have you. a wonderful all day. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Edmund. And a very nice job on your website. It's quite uh, intuitive. So oh, great thank work. you. Thank Thanks you. Thank you so much. Thank you.